uh, somebody fart sprayed my, like, there's an aerosol fart, I don't know if you know about this, fart sprayed the inside of my trailer once. Um, one time, Jared, there was a scene where I played Corporal Bobby Brown, and I, I, I go to a morgue and I'm dressed like in a military uniform, because like, Garth could never dress, dress like an FBI agent, but I think he did once. And, uh, and so, uh, I get there, and the scene is, Jensen and Jared are already, Sam and Dean are already there, and uh, uh, Jared, Sam, that's right, right? Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to call these names because I know them in real life. Um, so Jared is there, and he has, he's a file he's looking at, and I ask for the file. I'm supposed to look at it and hand it back. Well, they shot their coverage first, and when it was my turn, Jared had taken the paper I was supposed to look at, which was, I guess, to tell me like what had happened, how the person died, and, uh, like all that, the toxicology report and everything. And... Um, I look at it, and Jared has replaced the thing, and he put stick figures doing the worst sex things to each other you've ever seen. <laughs> it's all just covered in stick figure sex. Just trying to get me to break, but I didn't break. Um, what is your name and your guess? My name is Louise, and my guess is 72. Louise 72. Gotcha. Thank you for playing the World's Crappiest Game Show. So when you were introduced to Garth, um, I, I'm, I'm familiar that he, that he wears your underwear. You know, I know yeah. all of that is He wears my underwear. But what specific parts of Garth, when you were reading the script, or even after you got on set, were like, this is part of Garth. This well, is Garth was written for me. Oh, uh, really? Do you guys know this? No. So let me tell you how Garth, so Garth was written with me in mind. Um, I don't know, I can't, it wasn't Adam Glass. Adam Glass wound up writing Garth after I started playing him. But the genesis of Garth is that they wrote him with me in mind, and they offered it to me, and I turned it down. Um, so here's the thing. So I, so I wasn't really, I wasn't really doing TV back then. Like I mean, I guessed it on a couple things, but like, but Supernatural was a seven-year-old show I'd never seen before on the CW, and I never. So I was like, I, I, I don't, I wasn't watching the CW. I really don't watch a lot of cable stuff. Like if you're on Food Network or HGTV, I know who you are, right? <laughs> That's kind of nerdy stuff I watch, and so. Uh, and I love game shows too. Oh, I love The Amazing Race, and I love uh, Survivor, like that kind of stuff. You know, sort of good nature. But I don't. But I, I usually don't watch scripted television. Um, so anyway, they, I was like, send me over some episodes. So they sent me an episode where uh, Sam like falls down a hole and it goes to hell or something. Do you remember that? <laughs> they sent me over. So I, I sent it. I, I sent this email to my manager. Said this. So they're like underwear models, and they like Calvin Klein models, and they fight monsters. I was like, I'm not. And, I, and at the bottom of the email, I wrote, I'm not just. I'm not going to be in a show where I'm not just less good looking than the two leads, but staggeringly so. So pass. <laughs> and then they came back to me, and that's when they and they came back. Like, hey, we we wrote this for you in mind. If that makes any difference to you, and I was like, oh, no, wrote this with me in mind. And actually, since then, there's been pilots that I've read that say DJ Qualls type, and I'm too old to play. I'm too old to play myself now. Um, but, uh, and then I, somehow, I think I must have run into Jared, maybe at Comic-Con or somewhere, but somehow I talked to him before, and he was like, come on, you should do it. Just do one if you don't like it, don't do it again. And then I went and did an episode, and I was like, this is fun. And, and I liked everybody, and we have these sandwiches on Fridays. Have y'all heard about these sandwiches on Friday? They must have crack in them. <laughs> this lady comes on Friday and makes these hot sandwiches, and they're the best sandwiches. I'm not even a sandwich person. They're the best sandwiches I've ever had in my entire life. And their catering is the best catering that I've ever experienced. And that's the thing. If you want to, if you want to keep cast and crew happy, feed them, right? You had a choice of soups. I've never had a choice of soups before. And so I was like, I really like this show. And then, you know, Jared and Jensen were awesome to me. And... Jerry took me to lunch on the first day, and then, and then got me drunk and then left. <laughs> yeah, sure did that. Um, so, uh, did I answer your question? Uh, kind well, of. Well, tell me what it was again. <laughs> well, you said they had you um, in mind when they wrote it. Oh, yeah. But are there specific things, like after you read the script or when you got on set, that you added to the character? Oh, right. Oh, you know what? You know the, what the thing that I, I added? Uh, you know, every time he calls somebody, you know, and he, he, he does this, hey, Dean, it's Garth. I, I added that. Because, 
Because Dean has caller ID, or, or, or you know what I mean? Or he would, he would know who I am. Or he would know my voice, the first thing is like, I mean, he knows who Gar, what Gar sounds like. But, so every time he calls anybody, he always introduces himself. And so much so that when I do a cameo, and somebody, like, do it like Gar, I'm like, I'm like, hey, hey, it's Gar. Um, so I added that. Um, but as far as like characteristics, Garth is way more patient than I am. I, I, sh I would like to be more like that. I also would like to understand when things are not about me, when somebody's acting crazy and not get upset about it. You know what I mean? You know you're going through life and somebody's in some kind of place and they're not being very kind and they sort of take it out on you. It takes a lot of patience and a big, really resolved person to realize it has nothing to do with you and let it go. Because, you know, I'll fight my fire. Um, so, uh, so, what's your... I'm trying not to. Um, I'm Angie, and uh, 57. You know what, from now on when we play the World's Crappiest Game Show, I'm going to advertise it like this. You could win a crappy prize and get 37% of your answer answered. <laughs> you have to set expectations for people. So, party on Garth is probably one of my favorite Garth episodes. I can't hear you. Uh, party on Garth? Oh, Party on Garth. Oh, it's one of my favorites, too. Yeah. Where, um, was there actual real alcohol on set, or did you just like... No, that's illegal. That, that's why it was upsetting when, that time that Jared took me to... I, had, I wanted the sweet chili chicken at Cactus Club. You know what Canada is? Canada is the master of the upscale chain. We don't do it well here. But they have something called Cactus Club and the keg. Their keg's a steakhouse. It is consistent, high-quality food that's a chain that's reasonably priced all across the nation. Anyway, they have a, di a dish there called sweet chili chicken, and as a matter of fact, in the very first time you see Garth eating, when he goes, oh, Marmaduke, you crazy, they went out to Cactus Club and got me sweet chili chicken, and that's what I'm eating the whole day, because when you eat something on camera, you have to eat it over and over and over again, and it better be something that you like. What were we talking about? <laughs> what about actual alcohol on time? Oh, no, that's against the rules. You can't have... You can't have alcohol on sets because if somebody was injured, obviously, you know what I mean? But you can, the only place I've ever seen alcohol on a set is that they have wine with lunch in Montreal when you shoot a movie in Quebec. Because um, Quebec thinks they're France. And so, and so you have wine with, with lunch there. But you can't do it. But I, that's one of my favorite episodes because I love pretending to be drunk. Because when, you because when you pretend to be drunk, your brain messes with you a little bit and you feel kind of drunk. I mean, the power of suggestion, right? And so, I did feel a little buzz while doing those scenes. And I love drinking. I'm really good at it. Um, what's your, uh, what's, within, within moderation, like last night I had a couple of drinks and went to bed, but I went to bed early. Is it already time? Um, is it already time? Yeah, yeah. Sad. Well, this went by quick. Um, what's your name and your guess? Uh, it's Annabelle, and my guess is 99. Oh, Annabelle, have you seen those movies about those dolls, that doll? <laughs> I like those movies. I like, I like dumb, scary movies. But I have to watch them in the daytime. Every now and then I'll be by myself and I'll, I'll watch a movie because I live alone. And I'll watch a movie late at night and I, and I get nervous. And I, I have to double lock my bedroom door. I have a, dead, a deadbolt on my, uh, on, my de on my bedroom door because of scary movies. So guys, the winner of the, what was it? Mr. Fizzle's keychain thing? Yeah. It's actually really well made and very cute. And actually now I want to keep it. But I said I was giving it away. And here we go. The, an the, the number was 14, so Carol, you were 13. You were right on it. Come on, bud. Where's Carol? You know what? I should have kept it out, should I? I don't know what to do with it. Uh, Carol, uh, I, I will thank you guys so much for showing up to my panel. I know it's early, but I think we had fun. Did we have fun? memorable. I don't know if it's the favorite. It was the first day of shooting. It was that long pizza scene. And it was in rehearsals. And I was hungry. And I, it was a deep dish Chicago pizza. 
And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. And, and I ate, and Jensen's looking at me and going, you're really eating too much pizza, man. <laughs> and when it came to take 33, <laughs> spit bucket, please. <laughs> and so I, I will never forget that, the, the actual recording of, of that pizza scene. Because I began it by eating too much, not being strategic in my choices. Um, so Jack has one of the best um, emphasis of character entrance on uh, Supernatural. And so I was just wondering what the favourite um, character entrance that you've done and you've seen. I mean, what a gift! What a gift! Although I will always remember filming it and being told by the AD. Um, so it's great, you just get in that white car, you see that white car over there, and then you drive it from there, and then you go around the camera, and then you hit the mark over there. Okay? And you, I stepped in this huge Cadillac, this old car, step in it, close the door, you know, boom! And I start to drive, and it's one of those things that you drive, and you go... <laughs> and it doesn't do anything. So uh, anyway, I will always remember the sheer terror that I felt as I was driving in the entrance. I don't know if I've answered the question, but it's a little anecdote. I felt that shame. <laughs>
I really love the, she's probably one of my, some of Sam and Dean's best moments are in the baby. The question is, Jensen, you have the car, and it must be a surreal thing for you to keep from the show. And I was wondering if Jared, do you ever get jealous that he has the car? <laughs> You guys. I'm pissed. <laughs> we, actually, we actually both got one. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm so angry right now. And another thing I just wanted to say, um, just quickly, I actually was the girl who did car transformation for you for our photo. Oh, awesome. Yes, yeah. that was really awesome. That was cool. just amazing for you guys to see. And just thank you for loving it. That was awesome. That was awesome. very cool. Yeah, well done. I was genuinely shocked. She turned into baby. Like, full on. Like, I heard the noise in my head. Like, and then out of nowhere, I heard Optimus Prime. I don't know if he was outside. It was inside. Got it. She's walking back right there. She ran away. She drove away. Uh, <laughs> but my question is, uh, family don't end with blood has been so important in my lifestyle. Like, it's been an impact on my friends, and like, I've, it's literally grown. The meaning's literally grown on them, and like, I got it tattooed on me, and it means, that quote means the world to me, and I live by it. Uh, how much does that quote impact you, your guys' life? Awesome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Um, I, it's it's one of I mean, for it was one of the main kind of themes of the show and one of the reasons the show went so long and had so many people get so excited about it and really feel it because it's it is you know you, you choose your family they don't end with blood like your, your family can be uh, crowley you know your family can be cats your family can be uh, whoever um and it just for for me that quote kind of opened my eyes as to like, oh man, I, I get to love somebody even if they don't have the last name title like, you know? Not that that's what it's about, you know? You can love a lot of non-title like this. Um, <laughs> well, why would you, really? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad it, it, it made you feel something too. It certainly makes me feel something. Yeah, it's, it is uh, certainly a, a, a central theme to uh, not only the show, um, but I think also to what surrounds the show. This, uh, this, you know, I mean, we, we uh, this, the show is, is something that has brought all of us together, and that has become a, a temple of, of this family. And, and I think that, uh, that is very much something that we have all embraced ourselves. So I, I think you're you're very right to uh, put a lot of thought into that particular quote because it is it is a central theme to not only the show itself but everything that's around it. And even like even as we sit here right now, he's so right. But even as we sit here right now, like I realize that y'all are asking us questions and y'all are looking at us. But for 15 and a half years, 16 years, or whatever, we've been looking at y'all. And just because we were the ones on camera doesn't mean that y'all weren't as important, if not more important, to this story that we all love so. Uh, Gonna, my question is for uh, you guys. Um, so, Jared, um, I know you did it. Uh, you starred in a movie, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, and you were in a role in that. And also, Jensen, you did My Bloody Valentine. So, how did you feel about those roles? I know it was back in the day, but you know, that's when I first started. Doing it, so. Yeah, that summer, that was that was a, that was a, the. My Bloody Valentine, Friday 13th, it was a strange year. It was, it was 2008, and we had had a, a months long writer strike, and so we had kind of been out of a job and then gone back to Supernatural to shoot four episodes. It was kind of weirdly, oddly reminiscent of uh, the pandemic, or I guess vice versa, uh, the pandemic was reminiscent of the writer strike. Uh, so we're just waiting for a phone call, like, are we going back to Vancouver? Are, are we canceled? Are we going to get to work again? Um, and so that was fun to, to go off. Uh, for, for my part, for Friday 13th, um, it was hot. It was in Austin, which I, you know, is now home for both of us and our families. Uh, but I would like to, uh, I would like to speak on My Bloody Valentine because I, I have a very funny My Bloody Valentine experience. 
Um, so, uh, so, Kerr Smith was up in Vancouver shooting something, and my buddy Valentine was, was in the theaters. And we had an early wrap. For whatever reason, we wrapped at like 6 p.m. And so I was like, hey, we can probably make the 8.30, my buddy Valentine. And it was the, the 3D with the 3D glasses and the movie theaters. And so we waited until the movie started, uh, until we walked in, and we sat in like, you know, row eight or whatever. And it was probably a 30 row theater. And so I was laughing at myself, thinking about like, the people with the 3D goggles or glasses <laughs> looking at Jensen and Kerr and looking at movie, being like, these three experiences are great. <laughs> and I just sat there, and I was going like, this must be so surreal. But someone's like, man, it's like Jensen's right here in front of me. And here's her. Uh, so that was, uh, that was just something that I chuckled about often. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the first and last time we did films on our hiatus. <laughs> yeah. Because he and I both went straight from wrapping the season, basically straight into production on, on a film and finished the film and went straight back to the next season of Supernatural and we were we were exhausted. Uh, we were a lot younger. We were a lot younger so and still kids. exhausted. Uh, so yeah that's that's what I remember most of the experience is yeah. being just so exhausted by the end of it all because you know uh, uh, film and television uh, you know shooting 12 to 18 hours a day five days a week, sometimes six days a week. Um, it's definitely a, a taxi, it can be a taxi uh, experience. So that's what I remember. Plus, I was in a, like a, a, like a closed down mine for like six weeks, just deep in this, you know, cave. Uh, no sunlight, no air, filming for all hours of the night. Didn't even know if it was night or day outside. Just yeah, it was it was an odd experience. Um, but glad I did it. Well, you didn't look it because you still looked amazing in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Nice to meet you. My name is Francis. Um, I don't know if this is my first convention or very first one, but I'm sorry. Uh, I want to ask about John Hunting Diary. The John Hunting Diary. Oh yeah. So the prop has pretty much been the same prop the whole time. Did you guys ever see things added to it over the years, or has it always been the same? Well, we added some things over the years. So that was a funny. That was a funny. For those of y'all who don't know, the dad's journal um, and the pilot went missing before we shot in Ego. So they had to redo it as best as possible to match, but they matched some of the pages. And then we would add, you know, as if we had an episode where we were reading out of the journal. Somewhere somebody's got the original dad's journal and, and Dean's jacket, jacket yeah. and it's, yeah. and they're just living their best life. Hey, y'all find them, <laughs> you let us know. Uh, but yeah, so they, so they redid it, but we also, it, it, there were some blank pages. Um, and so if, if we were doing an episode, say, about a new urban legend, they would fill it in with the drawings and with the little cutouts. And then, you know, we, we'd be shooting with it on set for, like I was just saying, like 12 to 18 hours. And so we would add our own little things to it. Uh, so I don't know who has the most current journal, but they, it might be a, it might be good uh, uh, leverage if, if somebody wanted to blackmail us. <laughs> it's offensive. <laughs> Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thanks for your question. But less in the verbiage and more on the illustrations. <laughs> Weird looking monsters. <laughs> oh, is that one? Hi there. <laughs> what seems to be the things that really helped you guys out the most to get where you are now, and what kind of steps do you think I should take from here in your professional opinion? You don't, first and foremost, you don't need to be in the acting industry to be an actor. You know, you, you can act uh, when you go home time. You know, you, you can tell a story, because it's, it's about storytelling. It's about trying to, to uh, communicate themes and, and feelings. And so if, if, if you, if you want to be an actor, you already are an actor. Uh, and secondly, and this kind of can sound strange, but 
the more you learn who you are, the, the more I think you might be happy with your backing. Which is to say, you know, th there, are, there are hundreds or thousands of actors who could have played Sam, who could have played Dean, who could have played Cass, who could have played John. There are, there are. There, well, no, thank you. I, I, I wouldn't fish it, but thank you. No, please, no. But I mean, but I'm serious. But, 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 but I think I didn't. That, that sounded like I was fishing. I legitimately was not. Uh, but, so the, the, there's something. If, if you oh, we got a live one here. If you played Sam Winchester for 327 episodes, it would be wonderful. It would be part you, part Sam. Uh, the way I played it is part me, part Sam. You know, part Jensen, part Dean. And so don't lose yourself. You get to know yourself, try and meet people from all walks of life, from all different cultures, all different beliefs, and you'll kind of figure out where you land and, and bring, bring yourself as much as possible into the characters you play. You know, I had somebody tell me early on, uh, if you're lucky enough to get a job and get on stage, get on set, uh, be a sponge. Be a sponge and just soak up as much of it as you possibly can from, from the technical aspect to the creative aspect and everything in between. Um, when I first started, uh, you know, Supernatural, I'd, I'd done a, a number of projects prior to that, um, but I was still learning and I still asked questions and I still paid attention. Um, you know, even even in a, a, a maybe a part of the industry that didn't necessarily pertain to acting, I started asking, "Why are you using this lens on the camera? Why are you putting that light over there? Why are you uh, you know Why are we moving in this way? Why is the camera moving? But like, what? Why is this happening? It's all part of the storytelling, right? And I just wanted to know. It's like I say, like if if I was uh, a race car driver. I don't necessarily need to know how the engine operates, but I wanted to know, and I just felt that would make me a better actor. So, uh, so yeah, learn, be a sponge, and uh, and apply, and break a leg. <laughs> My favorite time between the brothers are when they're in baby, and something real. They know something really bad is going to happen, and then they sing a song. I was hoping you could sing one of your songs. <laughs> The problem is, for me, i got to go back to being Cordell Walker tomorrow morning, so if I get to San Winchester right now, it's going to be hard to break out of. Um, plus, I don't want to empty out the auditorium uh, in, in your pain. Your pain? Oh, you did Yeah, it's, it's time. It's time. It, it's time. You're going to need this. Yep. Okay. You ready? Yep. Mm, I'm down here, I'm gonna need you up here. I'm gonna need you down, down here. And I need you guys down here. Down there, so. Yeah, we're just not rehearsed. It's not, it's not gonna be good. This is, this is not gonna be good. Okay, okay. Let's go. 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 let us go let there's no saving me. I was not put on that cliff last time. Well, you know what? We, legit, uh, he, and I, he gave me a look earlier that I, that I knew meant, you're going to do this, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so we haven't had a chance to talk about what we're doing just yet, but we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you some, some, what do you call it, content. <laughs> Con content. Con content? Some influencers in the wild. Some, yeah, yeah. 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 Be aware, do not feed them or pet them. Oh man, I was getting in the car like two days ago and it was on the park of the street and I, I had hopped in the car with the deal, we hopped in and we were going to pick up uh, the kids from school and, uh, <laughs> and right on the sidewalk walking towards us was, I don't know, probably late teens um, and I, I, I thought she was having a seizure uh, uh, because, but then I realized that her phone was up here and she was like, <laughs> and 
And then, and I, I was like, oh no, does she need help? And then, and then Daniel just goes, she's influencing. And I guess she was doing some sort of TikTok thing, walking down the street, looking like an absolute fool. Um, I'm trying to not do that right now. Even though I just did it, so I guess I'll see that tomorrow. Every fail. Uh, thank you. We'll, we'll work on it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hello. Hi. My question, coming from my daughter, is if you could or had to go back and reshoot any episode, knowing what you know now, either because. <laughs> You want to be in a room at 60,000 bees? Bugs. I would redo bugs. <laughs> in, in a way that didn't make it happen. <laughs> that's true, because here's the funny thing about bugs, is we did, yeah, I think that's probably good, because we did shoot in a set with 60,000 bees, 60,000 bees, and but don't then, worry, they're drone bees, and they're very docile, and if you're calm, they, they're calm. Okay, great. When they yell action, though, swap. I've got a makeshift flamethrower. <laughs> they're gonna be cool with that? <laughs> no kidding, the B Wrangler goes, oh. <laughs> and we're supposed to be pretending. And that was it. That was it. Yeah. It, wasn't, uh, it wasn't if we were gonna get stung, it was how many times. Correct. And then the, the, the real kicker is that. We were shooting 35 millimeter film back in the day. The bees were too small to be seen on camera, so they had to visual effect them in anyways. <laughs> so we were in a room with 60,000 bees. For they, no reason! For no reason! <laughs> they ended up just using CGI anyways to put more bees in, so we're all like stung up. I remember, I remember like a month prior or two weeks prior, they brought, uh, I guess the bee, bee wrangler was set with a piece of mesh, like a four by four inch piece of mesh. I'm like, hey, we're here to do the outfit test. And I was like, all right. I think I was gonna like spin to a cup or something. And then he gets this long pair of tweezers out, grabs a bee, holds the mesh on my arm. I'm like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? He's like, well, we'll sting you. I'm gonna sting you. He's like, you're gonna sting me with a bee? He's like, yeah, we're gonna see if you're allergic. He's like, there's no way other than stinging me with a bee to see if I'm allergic to any of these things. Like, I don't like, I don't like, he's like, I gotta, I gotta have a pen and this and that. But I, yeah, he's like, I got a mesh. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, so. How does, how does that help me? You're like, well, it doesn't, it's for the bee. <laughs> so the stinger doesn't fall out. But the stinger's gonna go in, in my arm? Uh-huh. Yeah. But the bee's gonna be totally cool? Uh-huh. What's gonna happen to me? That's what we're here to find out. I guess we'll see. I'll tell you in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. With the EpiPen, like, staying there to make sure, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with bees. <laughs> bugs, bugs, not bees. Thank you so yeah. much. Was that even the question? I answered very quickly. It was. I'm actually wondering if you replay something differently. And I guess, I guess that, but then it's like you want to go back and relive that experience. And it's then because it's all going to be CGI it. as opposed uh, to having actual bees. So we can shoot it and not get stung and not have mesh. Got it. And not actually be terrified for our lives uh, <laughs> while shooting it. If you're worried about the dialogue. I'll also say uh, the scream in Yellow Fever, that would have been nice to have back. <laughs> You want, to, uh, you want to go a little bit bigger with it? A little bigger. Yeah, bigger. I would have gone bigger. Thank you. Hello. You want to see what I would have done? So these areas about to open the locker and the cat, the whole thing. This is what I this is what I would do if I had the chance to redo it. It's just a kitty cat. You did, you did. It's probably what I would have done, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Hello. Oh, I had so many other things I wanted to say right there, but I. <laughs> no, that's an inappropriate comment. So I just keep Do it. Keep it as PG. No, 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 no. Hi. Hi, my name is 
Alicia, and uh, this question is for Jensen, but Jared, uh, please feel free to weigh in on this because I would love for you to. Um, Jensen, I know you were a cheerleader. Um, how did you get into cheerleading? And um, do you still have your costume? And um, do you still know any moves? Because I'd love to see some. Yeah, I keep it right next to my coach's costume. Um, so, uh, I mean, at this point, it's like, sure, whatever you want to call it. We'll go with cheerleader. Um, and I wasn't even a yell leader. It was, uh, like, they have those at, like, Texas A&M, you know? No, we didn't do any of that. <laughs> we, were, we were the guys that brand the flags across the field when they scored a touchdown and then rang a big giant bell. That was the extent of our responsibilities. And then we just basically stood at the, at the end zone and had front row seats. Um, and it was like me and some of the other guys that played baseball. Um, Do you remember how to run with the flat? I, that thing was hard. I know it. It was like, it was difficult. Uh, yeah, I didn't do it every time, but I, I, did, I did do it a few times. Um, but, uh, but also, another one of the responsibilities that we had in that little club uh, was we got to escort, which is, this is really the reason I, I, I didn't care about running the flag, or even the, you know, getting to be on the field. We got to escort the captains of the drill team over to the other side to meet the other captains of their drill team and all of the women. <laughs> So, uh, do you watch Days of Our Lives? <laughs> yeah. Watch it in about three years. In yeah, about three years, tune in. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it was basically like, I think we were just wearing like polos and khakis. I mean, it was real Texas. Uh, so that's, that was the extent of my cheerleading uh, career. Um, and I don't know where my khakis are anymore. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> the plea of khakis. Uh, I do miss those, uh, those escort, uh, I do miss being an escort. <laughs> no one else does. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. You guys are like real life brothers to all of us. But how much of that is really you? Like, do you ever find yourself being Jared and Jensen and then find yourself randomly out in public and you guys are actually Sam and Dean? Like, do you ever <laughs> dream of yourselves and your characters and stuff like that? Like, that's do you ever a, wake up and be like, you gotta go demon hunting? That's, a, <laughs> that's actually a deeper question than maybe you even realize. Which, I, I, honestly, um, after, and I, I think we may have touched on this in some other way, but. At this point in time, I, I, you know, I'll speak for myself, and I, I think it's probably similar to Jensen, but I spent so much time playing Sam, and also, we had an amazing team of writers, as you all well know, and the writers will start watching the episodes and the dailies, you know, the scenes you do, and start writing more towards what you naturally do, so the characters kind of end up becoming Jared became more like Sam, and Sam became more like Jared. So it's kind of they continually tailor it yeah, to kind of yeah. you and, and your strengths. Yeah, and even what you're going like they even what you're going through, you know, because they talk to the directors and the producers and other people on set, and they're like, hey, you know, like I, I, I was pretty public about it, but like season eight in Sacrifice, what Sam was going through was very similar to what Jared was going through feeling like I'm a burden on other people. So, I don't know if it's life and taste art or vice versa, or both. I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive, but, uh, you know, there's a part of, there's a lot of Jared and Sam, there's a lot of Sam and Jared. Uh, so it's hard to, it's difficult to try and kind of parse it out. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we ever, like, snap into character out in the wild. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll echo what he says, that, that there's, there's certainly a large part of both of those characters that kind of reside in our, in our personalities and in our hearts and stuff. And so um, it's, 
it's very uh, it's very likely that we, we may come across like our characters from time to time, but it's it's by no design other than it's just that's it, just kind of who we are and who we've been for so long. I was just wondering, like, if you're out in public and you say "son of a bitch," and you're like. <laughs> Oh no, no, that that, that does guessing. that does happen uh, quite a bit, and and I I have had my wife say to me on multiple occasions, "Your bean is showing," <laughs> and then she'll say, "But you're also acting like him a little bit." <laughs> I can't stop that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I was just going to ask, like, so, Jensen, I know that you have just took on being Batman in The Long Halloween. Um, yeah. Um, I was, and Jared, your walker. I was just wondering, did... <laughs> Were you dropping us? Set of Supernatural for 15 years, and I think that gave it a uh, a a character to to my voice that that I think is, was why they hired me on to do uh, that that uh, that role. So yeah, I think Supernatural was largely responsible for me having <laughs> I mean, any kind of a voiceover career. Well, you guys actually your show. Like the first episode that was aired, it aired on like September 13, 2005. I was born two days later. <laughs> and, and your comic timing is already perfect. <laughs> perfect, absolutely perfect. Thank uh, you. Well, happy late birthday. <laughs> She's like, and, and you too. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. 
Yeah, you related to that person over there? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Just keep dropping mics, guys. That's it. That's great. Thanks. Um, but my question was, is Sam and Dean could be in any classic horror film? Invite any classic horror villain? What would it be? Or who would it be? And then what would they do to defeat them? I like it. That's a good question. That is a great, great question. So we can't do... Uh, well, this isn't exactly a horror film, but it's a film that I grew up watching and always wanted to be in, and I know he did too. So I think that Sam and Dean could obviously be in the Goonies. <laughs> Shotgun chunk. <laughs> that was a great, but, but I think I, we'd have to be buddies. We'd have to. Uh, I mean, yeah. They sh they, but if they ever try to redo that movie, boycott for life. Um, I, th uh, I, I I've always thought, and I haven't seen the, the the latest one, so forgive me if if I'm wrong in this, but. I always felt like Michael could have been the easiest one to, to, to off. He just walks around very slowly. I feel like to see him walk at you, you literally just go like a jog the other way. <laughs> and it's really <laughs> seriously. Be like, I'm just gonna go to the trunk of my car, I'll be right. You stay right there, masked man. Okay. Looking sharp, pal. A little pale, but looking good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd like to. I'd like to maybe in that franchise real fast, because um, it's it's very similar, in, in my opinion, to what what we would do on The Walking Dead, yeah. which is the zombie comes at us. It's just like, <sighs> yeah, seriously, it's walk, just, walk, walk it's just uh, uh, come here, come here, stop it, damn it, stop moving fast. I, I really think that's all it takes. I don't understand what the problem is. Jeff's gonna kill me. That's why I. <laughs> that's why I would get eat, eaten by zombie. Because I was just watching you guys, and I realized <laughs> Jared got away from you. And I was just, <laughs> just, you were just standing there like, "Who's this thing coming at me?" <laughs> uh, thank you, Susan. Wait, wait, wait. I have one. Wait, wait, wait. I have one question for you. If there was one horror movie character, monster, that you would send Sam and Dean after, who would it be? Sam Quinn! <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Freddy Krueger. Stand now, stand 
In the sky, we look upon to turn over fall over mountains to crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand. By me. So darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Who's dead now? Stand by me. Baby, you're in trouble, won't you stand? Jensen's not an asshole. Uh, so, it, 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 15% of the crowd was happy with that answer. Everyone else was like, I don't know.